On a daily basis, emergency responders are faced with challenging, dangerous, and draining situations, a resulting increased level of stress injury in the form of depression, anxiety, burnout, and even suicide is being felt among those who serve our communities. It's easy to forget they're there. It's easy for society to forget that they're always waiting to respond at a moment's notice to meet their needs. Emergency responders, even though they're often viewed as superheroes who are just naturally equipped to do this work, they're not, they're humans, just like everybody else. And it's oftentimes the human behind the badge, the uniform, the scrubs, the headset, who can suffer. Not only do they suffer sometimes the physical consequences of the work, but there are a lot of exposures. We know that we code trauma through all of our senses. So responders show up on scenes or respond to a patient or a call, and not only do they see this situation, they hear it, many times they touch it, they can smell it, sometimes even taste it. And these are all pathways for potential stress injury for responders. Relied upon when the unthinkable happens, Emergency responders, including healthcare workers, are now experiencing record rates of personal suffering, which often follows them home to their families. What we're noticing is that we have, we're seeing an increase in call, increase in violence, severe weather events, the frequency of them, um, as well as responders are also dealing with the problems and the issues of ordinary life. And that can range from dealing with families, inflation, um, the pandemic themselves, so they themselves might be impacted by that, and yet they still have to be able to respond to the community that they serve. The family of the responder, especially the significant other, is often left to manage the family alone, manage the family crisis alone. Sometimes the responder comes back and the significant other can tell that there's something wrong, that they need help, but the responder is not speaking with them about it. They're not communicating their feelings. And that's on top of the significant other and family members concerned with the safety of the responder for a day in and day out. In addition, a significant increase in stress injury, burnout, and other occupational impacts is creating societal issues with recruiting and retention throughout the emergency response field. People don't realize how stressful the work is. The, the work's essential. People rely on our responders, whether it's EMS or fire or police, to really provide that safety net. And people don't know how emotionally difficult that can be, right? Physically, mentally, all factors that are so stressful for responders. Now, several organizations are working together to provide better care to emergency responders in an effort to improve well-being and support the relationships of those who serve local communities. Responders are not on the front line, they are the front line. And so we wanted to create a foundation that could be able to have responders around the country have full access to some of the best practices and tools that are developed throughout this country. Built by responders for responders, we really leverage the power of strategic partnerships. We seek out actively other groups who are doing great work in the field and we collaborate with them. We realize that solutions are created together in collaboration and that together we are stronger. We recognize now, and it's backed by research, that chronic elevation of the stress hormones in the body and chronic activation of the sympathetic nervous system can trigger a whole cascade of responses within the body and other things that we've conceptualized as mental illness, but in this case are really stress injuries. It's an overwhelm of our coping mechanisms, physically, mentally, and emotionally. All Clear Foundation has created an array of wellness support services focused on mental, emotional, physical, and social well-being in response to the cumulative stress and trauma of emergency response work. We have been aggregating solutions that we've vetted to make them easily accessible and locatable on our website. We've also been vetting those strategic partners we work with to ensure that the work we put out is not only high quality, but that it is evidence-backed and driven. We really manage from the beginning the whole entire spectrum of the responder and their wellness. Because what we're seeing is that with the exodus of the responders, now they're having to manage more with less. It's overtime, more cause, fewer resources sometimes because of budget cuts. Supporting the human behind the badge, the uniform, and the scrubs, the foundation provides a full spectrum of support and resources through a variety of formats that increase accessibility, including digital, hybrid, video, and audio. This is one-stop shopping, so to speak. So anybody who's interested can hit up our Responder Strong clinical directory, 
or our All Clear Foundation resource directory and find what they need. And what we find is each of these tools and resources is a door, so to speak, for someone to enter. So they can seek to address one challenge, one thing that they're noticing right now, and then find that it can help improve the quality of their life across all of these other domains. We never charge an agency or a participant for any of our solutions or our resources. Right now, we have a $2 million Department of Health and Homeland Security grant that is specifically targeting the emergency response and healthcare agencies who serve small, rural, and medically underserved community in recognition that these responders are really suffering from the burdens of the past few years on top of those traditionally inherent in the work. Through these grants, we're able to reach out and to provide wellness programs for organizations who don't necessarily have the budget, the in-house expertise, or the local resources to take good care of their people. We're really pleased about that and are currently recruiting agencies in the small rural and medically underserved communities so that we can serve them. Empowering individuals with the knowledge and tools to cope with and adapt to stressors is helping to improve well-being and life expectancy throughout the sector. We believe in empowerment through knowledge and what that really equals is normalizing what responders are going through. We really engage and meet them where their needs are so that, that we can change that narrative that exists internally with responders and externally within major society. Yes, they're trained to deal with stressful events very differently than the majority of us are, but they're still dealing with very stressful events. And then they're going home and taking some of that with them. That's just not the way we should deal with individuals who serve our communities. We owe them quite a bit and we can't just remember them when we need them.